this old gaming room works anymore. I think we need a little bit of a makeover for our brand new 60K October post Splatoon 3 Q&A. This is how you know how fast my brain is going. Just, just as fast as these lights over here. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep, okay. Uh, we got ourselves a little profit over here. Agent 9 asks, how did you feel if Splatoon 3 added a feature to emotes? Mm, well, they have them. However, what I'm looking for is more emotes where you actually hold the weapon. Why can't I run around and flip an auto bomb all around? I know you can't see him because of the green screen, but, but you imagine him okay okay and maybe I want to take my sloshing machine and just violently throw it at the camera and then you get clonked out in the process boom G get owned next question <laughs> Yoshi 101 asks what is a Splatoon 1 variant that you want back with adjustments I would want either the berry splatter shot pro or the creamsicle mini splatling it was it was so cute and it was taken away from us too early. I mean, look, look, at, look at this orange and white. Hopefully I'm like putting it on the screen right now for you. It was good. Nick Crossman asks, question, when the heck did you get your ding dang braces removed? Or am I going bananas and you didn't have them? No, no, I did. They got removed a little while before I did that video, I think. I remember only because the end of June was too many games and I was mauling a bit because I knew I was getting my braces taken off like a week after the fact. I still have some of my bags of rubber bands I used to put on my braces. Woo! And inside the bag, should I be able to open it? It's just, it's just, it's just a lot, a lot of rubber bands. Ooh. Waffles asks, question, breakfast, lunch, or dinner? I just realized I like food questions. No, food, food questions are good. Keep, keep them coming. Your username is literally food. So what are you going to do about it? Also, 100% breakfast. Breakfast you can have at breakfast. Breakfast you can have at lunch. Breakfast you can have at dinner. So it, it's perfect. You won't see me complaining twice about being given waffles, pancake, French toast, um, like uh, even a bowl of oatmeal. Heck, put a little cinnamon in there. We're good. Delicious. Next question. Dry says, with all the customization options in Splatoon 3, will you change Slushy's appearance or will it stay the same? I wanted to do nothing, but Nintendo forced my hand and made me do something. Ooh, Nintendo, you want to give me back my jacket so bad. I grabbed a different green jacket, the Barazushi Anorak, and I kept my shoes. That's the only thing in the game right now. And I'm crossing my fingers that one of the later catalogs gives me my hat back. And I will be happy. Queo says, what is the deepest voice you can do? Um, I'm pretty sure I can get all the way up here. That's about as far as I can go in one direction. But I don't think this is really where you wanted me to go, correct? You wanted me to go all the way down here and find how far down deep I could go while trying to talk in the camera at the same time. I don't think I can go any deeper than this, unfortunately. So this is about as deep as you can get me to go. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect! Ben says, oh, a very real gaming room! The question, how did you get such cool, very real gaming room? Well, as I stated beforehand, my brain is always going really fast. That's what this picture shows. But if you want a room like this, all you have to do is use Google. And no, this isn't sponsored. I'm giving Google free views right now. You're welcome, Google. Cybora says, what do you think of the idea of having shell phones in Splatoon 3 that you use to access the menus instead of them existing out of universe? A lot of stuff has in-universe explanations, so one for the menus would be really cool. I wanted, um, I wanted in-universe menus on the phone for my apartments, but they said no, no apartment for you, Victoria. So, so yeah, I was always for it, and technically speaking, it is in the game now, just in a different way. But I thought it would have been fun to be able to walk off to your own space and have your inkling sit down on like a little couch or maybe like their chair or like their bed and be able to access menus inside of the apartment on their phone. The idea being, you open up a menu, you can see various Splatfest posts or Plaza posts, you can check out your stats and everything like that. But instead, it's just, you know, given to us the normal style menu, which is totally fair. So yeah. Water Turtle says, ooh, a Q&A. If you could only eat from a specific restaurant for the rest of your life, what the heck would it be? I'm gonna, I'm gonna pain a lot of people with this. 
but my first thought was Applebee's. And you must ask, but Victoria, why in God's name would you want to go to Applebee's forever? And the answer, my friend, is half off apps. You take your amigos, you waddle on down to the Applebee's, and before you know it, you can grace yourself with so many appetizers for only half the price. And if I'm really gonna be stuck going to Applebee's the rest of my life, I, I might as well at least be saving my money when I go, right? Right? Otherwise, I don't know, Cheesecake Factory? They do have, like, the biggest menu. If you don't know, Cheesecake Factory, part of their brand literally is, Hey guys, we're the Cheesecake Factory. We've got lots of stuff. Our menu big. Please buy food. That, that, that's literally, like, part of their whole brand. So, yeah. I trust them to make sure I don't go hungry too fast. Rainbow Kid asks, what do you think of a Splatoon and Kirby crossover? You think playable Kirby would be fun? I agree with you. I think if like there was a Splatoon equivalent for Kirby, it'd be kind of funny because Kirby could definitely like use a gun, but he also could be the ink vac style, like ink suck thing too. Like if you think about it, since Kirby is always trying to like copy abilities, he already has like a vacuum in him. He could be an ink vac and also a pew pew constantly. You'd have to be thinking about when you want to actually be putting down turf and when you want to be keeping other people from putting down turf. I think it'd be fun. Imagine, Kirby atop Eel Tail Alley. You can't do anything to paint that top unless you go and waddle your way along the side and go pff, 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 without them noticing you. Sounds like a pain. <laughs> Doc says, with Splatoon 3 on the horizon, I'm gonna celebrate by asking some questions. What the heck is my least favorite Kirby game? <sighs> so growing up, I really liked Kirby Tilt and Tumble. It was this almost crystalline pink Game Boy color game. And you put it in your Game Boy color, it had a big old rumble pack, and you could tilt your Game Boy color to be able to move Kirby around on a big old like pinball machine. And when I was young, I thought it was awesome, but when I was older, now I, I, I'm really, really bad at it. And I really want to know how younger Vic was good at it, because I'm not. Maybe maybe the rumble is just not that great anymore, maybe it just hasn't lived well with age, because my Game Boy is very old, but... <laughs> I care less about it now than I did back then, but this nostalgia, nostalgia always will be there. And if I had to pick a couple of favorite Kirby copy abilities, I'd be hard stuck between like spark and UFO because the UFO you could you could fly everywhere it's always the it was always the best they were playing like Kirby air ride I had this immediate need to have wheel as much as possible even though wheel wasn't even always good to have I just wanted to have it just in case we randomly got to a boost pad that could make me go faster you know can't, can't complain your last question got cut off here but my favorite sandwich would be just a good old peanut butter and jelly if I'm picking a basic sandwich if I want to spice up a regular cold cut sandwich though one of the things I used to do when I was young is um I would I would just grab a big old bag of the shredded cheese and and just dump it in the sandwich and it worked really well. Woohoo! <laughs> Bazinger says question if you were to design a special for a weapon, what the heck would it be and why? Hmm I think you know how we have curling bomb rush in old games but not now? I, I would be very down to clown with a squeegee rush just be able to drop a bunch of squeegees on the ground like the little guy from hero mode and have him just randomly suck up the enemy ink but leave yours behind i think that'd be funny obviously they wouldn't last forever but imagine just dropping those in front of where a rainmaker is going and just letting them do their job completely stopping the rainmaker carrier from going ahead and maybe getting splatted along the way i think it's even more evil than a curling bomb rush honestly Blair says, if you had the choice of one of these two Splatoon 2 maps returning, which would it be? Air on a mall, Camp Triggerfish. Now, I was going to say Bluefin Depot, the better map of all these, but obviously that option wasn't given to me. So between the two, I would rather give Air on a mall a third try. And you must ask Victoria, why would you do that? Why would you want to do that? Well, seeing after what they did to Hammerhead Bridge, where they just turned it into Walleye Warehouse 2, they might just take Arowana and turn it into original walleye warehouse. You never know. Maybe it wouldn't be the way that it is anymore. Maybe they'd take Arowana Mall and just kind of squish it in a little bit. 
<laughs> just to make Charger good on that one too. Ah. <laughs> but no, I refuse to bring back Camp Triggerfish and no hypothetical that you can think of is gonna make me want to bring it back. None. Abilanus is Misfic. How do I get better at playing Splatoon without touching the controller like you? You see, you don't want to actually have to use a controller to be able to play Splatoon. What you have to do is you gotta go into private battles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what you have to do after you go into private battles is you have to put yourself on spectate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what you do is you watch everybody else play. And you just absorb some of the knowledge. You see from these players, what are they up to? What are they doing? What weapon are they playing? Why are they playing it like that? Where are they going? Is it a good idea? Just take some time to analyze what people are doing. And thus, you can get better at the game without doing anything. Danger asks, so... Vic from the future, are there apartments? No. No, no, there aren't, Danger. No, no, there aren't. I believed. But one month from release, we were clowned upon. Just like I keep getting clowned on by the crickets that are outside, because this is not being recorded late at night or anything. No, not at all. It just looks like it's night out because of the gaming room. That's, that's, that, that's, what, that's what it is. That's what it is. Tiger Art says, if you can make a character for Splatoon 3 and they have a 100% chance of getting in, what to heck would they be? Can we get like a shrimp? <laughs> Just because it'd be funny to see Krusty Sean interact with an actual shrimp character, given some of the choices of things that Krusty Sean tends to make. I don't know if that would be his most happiest customer if they happen to walk on in on Krusty Sean's deserved restaurant that he didn't get in Splatoon 3 Nintendo where- Toy says, what weapon class would you want as a Grizzco weapon in Samurai Next Wave and how cracked would it be? Well, seeing as when I'm recording this, we've already seen the Grizzco bow. I'd be down to see what they do with a sta- I almost said a stamper. With a splatana! <laughs> My brain already thinking of the stamper and how strong it is. Let's just take a splatana that goes at wiper speed, but has like an insanely unnecessarily long swipe. <laughs> Not far away, but just extra wide. So when you send out the swipe, it like- like the, the swipe itself is kind of like goes out really far. I think that'd be really broken, especially if it like does high damage. Imagine all the DPS you get out of that. I'm sure they'd make it. So like this swipe uses like a like an eighth or like a sixteenth or something of your ink tanks. Everybody dies trying to use it. But when used right, you could probably do a lot of Koazuna damage with it. You could probably get rid of a steel head really easily. Maybe, just maybe hear me out. It could go through various surfaces like a scrapper shield or like the fly fish center, kind of like the Grizzco Slosher, allowing you to really get rid of opponents easy peasy with this weapon. I think that'd be fun, busted, and worth it! Nishi says, question, if you could make a game, what the heck would it be? So, um, when I first started making this YouTube channel, I was actually trying to get into game development and not into Splatoon. I wanted to upload Splatoon stuff, but I primarily wanted to make games. At the time, I was in college, I had learned a fair amount of Java, JavaScript, TypeScript, and a little bit of Python, and I thought to myself, man, it'd be fun to make games. There's a really good JavaScript framework out there called Phaser, which allows you to code up really, like, nice, basic, like, pixel and, like, Flash style looking games, and you can make some really cool stuff with it if you know what you're doing. I, I sure didn't. I desired to start out by making games that would kind of have the vibe of the games that were on the Wii U, like Squid Jump. I wanted to make a game known as Squid Tally, and I made a website for it and everything, and I never did anything with it. Woohoo! And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to make a game where squids would fly across the screen and you would just count them. And if you counted the number correctly, you moved on to the next one. So it was like extreme potato counter on Neopets, but for Splatoon. The small purple squid on the bottom right corner of this video is actually one of the first squids that I put into a nice vector size, like, file. That's how I could use it in the game I never made. So I've kept the image all these years because it reminds me of my roots.
boots. <laughs> Maybe someday Squid Tally will exist, because it, it, it's not complicated. I've just forgotten how to code in JavaScript. Yay! Starry asks, what the heck is my favorite special for Splatoon 3? It's the Wave Breaker! Ooh, Nintendo! You wanna put it on a- on a slosher so bad! Oh my god, if they put it on a slosher, it's- it's over! Because what the Wave Breaker does is it forces opponent to jump, or they get hit with 45 damage. And that 45 damage mark is basically enough for most sloshers to get a one-hit kill afterwards, so like... Give 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 me give me that. Oh my goodness Otherwise what it does is it makes people jump and when they're jumping they're easy targets for chargers for blasters For slashers like me. So yeah, I, I want it I really want wave breaker on one of my slasher weapons till then I'll happily keep using it on heavy because it's fun John says what are Sheldon cuttlefish and Judd's favorite weapons? Hmm I'm gonna put Sheldon as a really heavy weapon user. I think it's funny because he's like small and he's got something really obnoxious. I think Sheldon on Explosher would be great. Just imagine him running on in, pinpoint accuracy of course, because Sheldon has spent so much time learning how opposing Inklings and Octolings want to play that that man's ain't missing once he knows what you're up to. He's got an IQ of like a high number. I don't know how, I, how high IQ numbers go. <laughs> <laughs> Cuttlefish, if you really give him anything but a bamboozler, I don't think he's gonna be a happy guy. I mean, like, you could give him a regular charger, see how it goes, but I, I think he's gotta stick to his bamboo. And, and our one and only Mr. Judd? Hmm. What if I just give him arrow spray? Because, listen, one of Judd's main functionalities is to find out how much turf you're using. So wouldn't Judd want to use the thing that lets him turf the most? So he has the best chance of winning too? Uh, I think he would. And do I have any weapons that I always forget exist? I would say that prior to Splatoon 3, I would always forget about the Tetradulies existing. Like, you'd see it once in a blue moon show up, and I'd be like, oh yeah, those ones. Like literally, I think I saw Glugas more often than Tetras. I think it's like anytime I'd see like a rare Gluga Dooley, they'd be like insane at the weapon and I would just die. So like when I saw a Tetris and I didn't like, you know, die, I was like, oh, okay, it's just, it's just a Tetra Dooley. <laughs> Have I ever seen a sea bunny, Catloaf Man says. Yes, and now pfft, I'm showing everybody because that was a very good idea and I want people to see it. Woohoo! <laughs> Sketch simply asks, since the next Q&A is probably coming out after Splatoon 3, was it worth the hype? Yes. If you enjoyed the Q&A, thank you for reaching the end. If you want to leave a question, feel free to do so down here at the bottom. I'll do another one of these before the year ends because that would be in like two months from now and I'll try to be consistent about that. Will I be? <laughs> But I can try! R right? Right? This is the part where the screen fades away, and then I put a note here saying Vic will never be consistent with these Q&As. Ah.